Hello everyone, my name is Phuc Nguyen and from University of Colorado, Denver. Uh, today I'm going to talk about our recent work on battery-free identification token for touch sensing device. This is my joint work with uh, Yu Phuc, Moon Cook, Professor Aswin, Professor Korsik, Professor Marco, and my advisor, Professor Tambu. Uh, human interaction uh, with mobile device through touch sensing has become the most common form of interaction uh, since the inception of touch enabled mobile device. Uh, nowadays, touch sensor, touch surface are almost everywhere. It is inside your mobile phone and laptop. It is inside the smart vehicle, inside the ATM machine, the smart appliance, the uh, medical device, and some other device that you are interacting uh, in our daily life. So, uh, the Touch sensor, touch survey, or touch screen uh, are used for uh, the interface between the human and the device itself. So uh, it is essentially a one bit communication channel where bit zero is uh, no touch and bit one is the touch event. So we ask ourselves a question can an object interact with the touch device? Because if we could do this, we could enable a set of uh, interesting, exciting application that I will mention uh, in the next few minutes. And also, we have the capability of utilize the ubiquity of the touch sensing and touch surface. The first application that I want to mention here is the collaborative uh, application. This figure shows two designers are designing the same house using two stylus on the same tablet. If the sty each stylus can send each information to the mobile device through the touch sensor, then the touch sensor can recognize the location of each stylus. The, uh, the application on the mobile device can tell the activity of each user and then we can infer it for a counting application, for example, to listing who did what and who done what. So in order to enable this application, there's a requirement of associating the user ID to the collaborative activity. The mobile device needs to know uh, which activity from which, uh, which uh, stylus, and the stylus have to has uh, have to have the capability of sending its information to the touch screen. In another scenario, imagine one day two kids can place a racing car by placing two different uh, uh, by placing two different car toy on top of the touch surface. Each car will send its information to the touch device. The touch device has the capability of recognizing the activity from different tokens based on the location and the ID of uh, each uh, toy car. Also, in another scenario where we have a kid that play a baby doll on top of the touch surface, the baby doll has the capability of sending its information to the mobile device through the touch screen. The mobile device has the capability of recognizing the ID, showing the configuration um, environment, and also the family, every relationship that related to that baby doll. But in general, it is a capability of associating and uh, between the real the real world token, the car on the kid hand, and the car inside the mobile device. That association is missing in our current state of the art techniques. So, in order to realize those scenarios, there's a need for associating the identity to the touch interaction. The mobile device needs to know the information of the token on top of its surface, and the token needs to send its information to the mobile device through the touch sensing, uh, through the touch sensor. We propose the new uh, solution where we design the token that has the capability of sending its information to the touch device through touch screen or touch surface. This token can be easily augmented to 
any artifact that we can easily create by the 3D printer. The key idea here is that when we play the token on top of the touch screen, the token will continuously generate the capacitance variation which can be recognizable by uh, the touch sensor. In our system, there are two main components. One is the transmitter, which is the token that can send its information to the touch screen. Another is the receiver, which is the touch screen or touch surface that can recognize the capacitance variation and then inform it into the information, decode it uh, to, to get information that's sent by, by the, uh, the token. So we, let's talk a little bit more detail about how do we design the transmitter and receiver. For the transmitter side, the key idea is, uh, is that we create a capacitance variation on the surface of the touch screen, which is measurable by the capacitive touch surface. Uh, to deploy this, uh, we only need to implement a very simple switching mechanism where we attack, connect and disconnect the additional capacitance source. In our study, the additional capacitance source can be the human skin or the electronic capacitor. By understanding uh, the, the token ID, the, um, we only need to implement the simple mechanism to convert from the token ID to the binary bit sequence, and then convert, use the uh, Add the, the microcontroller to convert the switch to open and close the connection between additional capacitor and uh, to infer the uh, to make the capacitor variation follow the pattern that uh, represent for the pitch sequence. For example, in order to send this pitch sequence, we only need to vary the capacitor as in this uh, pattern. When we keep it silent, when we keep the capacitor at the normal level, when we want to transmit bit zero, when we want to transmit bit one, we will vary the capacitor on top of the touch surface. We can be recognized by the touch screen. Understanding this model, we know that the efficiency of uh, data communication depends on the efficiency of variation, variation the capacitor on top of the touch surface. So the question here is, how do we vary the capacitance efficiently? Because the number of time that we can vary the capacitance on top of the surface will define the uh, data rate of our uh, data communication. To answer this question, we analyze the very simple, uh, uh, we analyze the fundamental uh, mechanism of touch sensor. In this figure show the behavior where the user press the, to the touch surface and then release. If we model that in the time domain and the, the time domain, it is the variation of the capacitance over time. And the time that we start, the capacitance start increasing and start dropping down, that period can be considered as the pressing time where the user press down to the touch surface and then release. On the, on the receiver side, the receiver will scan the human touch at the periodically at a certain frequency, let's call that's it, the propping frequency. The duration of the propping frequency represents the minimum amount of time that enough for the sensor to recognize the human touch. It is in order of milliseconds, so that's why most of the time when you press to the touch sensor, the touch can be resistor to those, the touch surface. But the constraint here for, in our, in our communication channel, we mimicking the human touch behavior. So if we want to increase the data rate of our communication, we need to make the capacitance variation is very close to the propping frequency of the touch screen. So it is becoming the optimization problem where we need to find the time of pressing and release or vary the capacitance that uh, close to the probing frequency of the touch surface. So in order to design our transmitter, we need to design and finding the value T press or the pressing time that close to the probing frequency of the touch sensor. So how do we, but how do we find the time, the probing time of each device? Because this information is not provided by the manufacturer. 
we develop a algorithm to enable the token to sense and recognize the probing frequency of the touch surface automatically and systematically. The key idea here is that when the touch sensor probing to uh, find the touch surface, it will create a very small voltage leakage on the surface uh, of the touch device. The idea can be observed from this experiment where we have the oscilloscope that measure the voltage leakage on top of the Samsung Galaxy S5. So you see that there is a periodic signature on the waveform which represents for the probing frequency of the touch surface. We build our own token uh, to uh, get in the leakage voltage on top of the surface, and the result is uh, as following. When this, this, is, this figure saw the spectrogram where the screen is turned off, we only see the frequency signal that affect by the electricity. But when the, the screen is turned on, we can clearly see two different main frequency in the signal that we receive. One is from the AC signal, another the one from the AC noise with the electricity, another from the propping frequency that created by the touchscreen. We develop, uh, we use the autocorrelation function to obtain this propping frequency. Uh, the result is shown in this figure. The left figure shows the raw data that uh, collected by our data token. The right figure shows the uh, result of autocorrelation function where we obtain the repeated component inside that uh, uh, signal. Uh, the similar result is obtained for Samsung Galaxy S5. Um, and uh, we also can identify the uh, repeat component which represent for the probing uh, duration of probing frequency of the touch surface. We did another experiment on diff 12 different devices uh, in the lab, and this result so the uh, probing frequency obtained by different device, it can be seen in this figure. Different device will give you the different probing frequency, which means we need to, uh, the, in order to transmit or vary the capacitor efficiently, the token need to know and understand in what parameter, which is the probing frequency here on the receiver side in order to adjust itself to improve the efficiency of the communication. So now we have the transmitter ready. The transmitter already know which frequency it needs to vary the capacitor that understandable and measurable uh, efficiently by the receiver. So the, the next step is how to design the receiver that capture the capacitor variation uh, on top of uh, its surface. The idea is simple. We only need to capture the capacitance variation and then it be modulated into the bit sequence. But it doesn't work that way because it's most of the API that provided by iOS or Android. We cannot get the raw data from the raw capacitance data from the uh, API. So, uh, but we want our system to work with most of the shelf device, which means we don't need to root the device in order to use other system. The key idea here is to analyze the touch events. Because the capacitor variation on the token will create the artificial touch event which will be recognizable by the device. By analyzing the touch events, we can demodulate the bit sequence that was transmitted by the transmitter. There are six different information that we can get from the API, including the timestamp, the event type, which means the press event or release event and the XY coordinate of the event. But for most of the uh, API, the current API that provide by iOS and Android, we only can obtain three different information. The other information cannot be usable with the current uh, supported API. But those three information from the timestamp, event type, and XY coordinate are sufficient for us to demodulate the PC one that were transmitted by the transmitter. So we now already designed the transmitter and receiver, and we established the communication channel where the mechanism is very simple. Only need, the transmitter only needs to turn on and turn off the switch by a microcontroller. Because this communication is very 
uh, efficient in terms of power, power consumption. So we ask ourselves a question, can we make it become battery free? So, so far in the community, we have been discussing about uh, harvesting energy from the light, from the radio signal, or from the human motion. But in this paper, we introduce a new way of harvesting the energy from the touch device. So the key idea is from the experiment, similar to experiment that we did before, where we have the electrode or the oscilloscope that measure the leakage voltage on top of the touch surface. So we build our own token to uh, do the ADC reading to try to capture what is the level of voltage that uh, leakage on top of the touch surface. And we uh, play the token at different places on the tablet, and the right figure shows the uh, voltage leakage that is observable by our token, which means the leakage voltage are available at entire screen, and which is somehow, we, if we can develop the energy harvesting circuit, we can use that energy and supply for our token for communication. By then, we then create a new way of communication with battery-free unable. So looking for this uh, uh, experiment, result from this experiment is very exciting. So we decided to uh, create a very simple energy harvesting, including the rectifier and uh, 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 storage voltage. The, the key idea, um, the energy from the rectifier can be used to pump up the storage uh, capacitor, but it doesn't work. because We cannot harvest any energy from that simple design of the energy harvesting circuit. We look at a signal again, and we found that there's so many frequency components inside the signal. And some, we are not sure that if all the frequency components contribute and harvestable by our device. We do the Fourier analysis on the leakage voltage, and we found that there are two main components. The first component in the low frequency component, which is very low to uh, uh, the DC level, which create the flicker noise. With, um, the flicker noise. This flicker noise cannot be used to trigger our uh, Chopsky diode that we have in our harvesting in a circuit because our circuit relies on the, uh, the triggering of that diode. And most of the circuit that we are using recently for energy harvesting, we have to use the, the diode for, uh, to boom up the charge to the capacitor. So we, uh, we analyzed the signal and we found that if we remove the noise or the frequency component that affect to the flicker noise, we can use that frequency, the, re the remaining frequency component on the leakage voltage to boom up our capacitor, which means uh, to charge the capacitor that is sufficient and usable for our communication later. The result so that we can have as enough energy if we select the proper uh, bandwidth filter to remove all the noise and keep the remaining component that is harvestable. We can have enough energy for our communication after 38 seconds. This circuit show our designing uh, uh, this model. Th this figure show our harvesting model uh, design. It's including the bandwidth filter where we need to specify the frequency that we want to remove and we want to keep uh, for the harvesting uh, circuit. And the rectifier is used to boom up the capacitor CS and then used for the microcontroller. The figure on the bottom saw the actual uh, design that we have in the lab. We implement different prototype uh, for our communication, including the chess piece, the uh, 3D artifact, the racing car, the stylus, the ring, and the glove. We develop those applications and give it to the user for user study. Um, for uh, more information about the evaluation of the system, I prefer you to uh, read our paper. I just want to highlight some high-level idea and high-level uh, uh, accomplishment that we achieve from our system. The first one is about the detection rate. 
The detection rate here, we want to evaluate the object identification accuracy. How many percent that we can, the, the device can accurately recognize the ID that's sent by our token. We evaluate, evaluate with uh, different device in the lab, different model uh, from, uh, and from different manufacturer, from Samsung, from Motorola, and from LG. We obtain from 95% of accuracy for identification for most of the device. For the power consumption, because we, we want to evaluate how much power that we need to consume for uh, our communication, because the communication is very, our communication channel is very simple. It's only closed and open circuit. So the, the, this figure shows the performance of evaluating our uh, power consumption compared with the NFC active and Bluetooth low energy. As can be shown in this figure, the power consumption of our uh, approach is proportional to the data size because it's proportional to the time that we open and close the uh, switch for communication. Meanwhile, with the data rate uh, less than five, the data size less than 512, we only need to require one packet of communication for NFC and active and Bluetooth. So that's why the energy measurement for active and Bluetooth are almost constant. And this measure, in this measurement, we use a Moonsoon power monitoring uh, device to uh, obtain on the result. We also evaluate the impact of our profiling techniques. By profiling techniques, I mean the technique that allowing the token to understand the probing frequency uh, of each device. Because the probing frequency are not provided by the manufacturer. The manufacturer usually only provide the information about the screen regression rate. So we want to see by if we don't understand the probing frequency of the touch screen and yield the, touch uh, the screen regression rate to generate the uh, capacitance variation, how much accuracy that we can receive. And the red, uh, the red line here show the performance when we don't know the, what is the probing frequency of each divide. The, 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 the black, uh, uh, the, uh, the data, the, the black line here show the performance of using our approach where we know exactly which frequency we need to vary the capacitance and at fre which frequency we need to uh, create a pressing and release event. We give the token that I mentioned earlier to our user. We have 12 users and most of them give a the very positive uh, feedback on both the object um, identification and uh, authentication applications. Um, for the learning time, uh, most of them require uh, less, than, less than 30 seconds to understand how to use our token and how to actually uh, use it for different applications, including authentication and identification. To conclude uh, my talk, I would like to summarize three takeaway points from our uh, work. One is we uh, propose a new technique to associate the identity to the tokens, which relying, uh, re realizing the uh, associating between the physical world and the digital world. And secondly, we propose a new technique to allow the token to profile and understand uh, the parameter of the touch screen and then adjust itself to improve the efficiency of communication. And lastly, we present the preliminary result on harvesting the energy from the touch surface. There are many other applications uh, that we can enable by using our techniques. As in this figure, we can use it for device authentication, vehicle security, payment, uh, payment uh, smart appliance, medical security, home security, and some other application that I mentioned earlier. Thank you for listening and I would like to take questions if you may have. Questions?
Peng Yu from Stanford. Yeah. Uh, very interesting work. I have a question regarding the energy harvesting part. Yeah. So um, it seems that the voltage out, uh, provided by the touch screen is around 0.5 volts, right? Uh, from uh, that's it from Samsung Galaxy S5, from Samsung Galaxy S6, some device we can see it go up to 5 volts. 5 volts? Yeah. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so do they provide the, uh, it's a, is it an AC signal or the DC signal? Uh, that's it, the AC signal. So uh, how many stages do you have for the rectifier? Uh, we have only four stage. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's sufficient for boost the voltage to the 1.8 volts needed by the microcontroller. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, excuse me. So, um, can you explain again, like, how do you change the capacitance? Like, when you come with your finger, right, mm -hmm. you change the electromagnetic waves, and okay. how do you simulate? Can you elaborate a little bit of that? So, the, um, the mechanism is quite simple. We only need to connect and disconnect the capacitance, uh, the additional capacitance to with on the touch surface which means you connect or disconnect your skin to the touch sensor. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, uh, Brad Campbell, University of Michigan. Uh, I just a question, um, did you ever try harvesting from the light coming from the actual display? Oh, uh, we, we saw that it's, it, can, it can go to 300 millivolt for the voltage okay. and, um, but, uh, that's have been done a lot in the community, so we don't really try that part. Um, Zhuhua from Oxford University. Um, yeah. Just curious if you can give a little bit more information on the threshold voltage of the um, diode and also the voltage harvest in the uh, electrode. It would be great. Um, I, I don't really get a question, sorry. Uh, do you, I just want to uh, get a little bit more information on the voltage harvest in the uh, electrode. electrode. And also, uh, what is the threshold voltage of the diode you used? So the, the actual voltage that we obtain from most of the device from 1 volt to 5 volt. 1 volt to 5 volt? Yes. Uh, from the electrode? Yes. Okay, so what is the like, um, current uh, during, in that vo voltage? The current? Yeah, what is the current received uh, in, a, in, a city, in a 1 volt to 5 volt voltage? We, we had that information in the paper for different devices because different device will give you a different value, but okay. I don't really remember. For All right, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll check that. Yeah. Uh, Josiah Hester from Clemson University. So it sounds like each device has a slightly different uh, power profile as well as uh, frequency. Yes. Um, and it sounds like most of the, um, but most of this recognition was done offline. Do you have any plans for trying to recognize different devices online? Uh, so that you don't have to bake in the power profile and frequency. For instance, if the device that they use changes, like they upgrade from the iPhone 5 to the 6 or 7 or 25. Uh, so the, 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 the thing is that we actually have those two components in, can be implemented in one board, and uh, the, we use the slide switch, the slide switch to uh, convert from the communication to the profiling. So actually, profiling can be done uh, in online. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Maurizio Boca from Bosch Research and Technology Center. Yeah. Um, starting from this uh, last slide, can you give me one practical use case in any of these uh, application domains? Yeah. Just very practically, how how would you sell it to a customer? Uh, okay, so um, let me select the, the first one for device authentication and identification. So let's say instead of carrying the, uh, so in, for example, instead of open the, your mobile phone using, uh, by pressing a different button, you can use the wearable device such as a smartwatch to can use it for identification and authentication. Um, to authenticate the device. Uh, but we have some other application like, uh, but the thing that we want to uh, say here is mostly about um, how do we augmenting the physical uh, world to uh, uh, the digital world where we have the actual token 
and the, to the information inside the device, we have to map them together for localization and uh, some other technique. But one advantage that I need to mention here uh, for device identification and authentication is our technique has a very uh, high advantage compared with wireless technology where we don't emit any signal out. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's thank the speaker again.